<laughs> hello Facebook hello Instagram welcome back to another predestined predestined kingdom ministries I am Kenithia J I am a servant leader of the utmost high God this is our ministries for all of us <laughs> in the name of Jesus so let me just make sure volumes and everything are up Okay, I'm trying not to be so loud because I was going back through some of my videos and I was loud. <laughs> so I'm just going to get into the word today. In today's scriptures we're going to be reading from will be Psalm 13, 5 and 6, Jeremiah 44. Psalm, Psalm 13, 1 through 6, Jer um, Matthew 28, verse 18, and Jeremiah 45, verse 5 through 6. So, Whew, the Lord was ministering to me, you guys. He was telling me a lot because of my own situation that I'm going through. So, he was just really ministering to me. And I wrote down what was for all of us. So, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Lord. I pray, I pray. In the name of Jesus, you wash my flesh out. And you fill me up with your anointing, your Holy Spirit. That breaks the yoke of the enemy, the power. Hallelujah. The power of you, Lord God. May it be activated in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for calming me down. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray I go into this word. I pray only say what you want me to say, not what my flesh wants to say. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, family. I'm excited. Look at y'all coming in on live through Facebook and Instagram. I see y'all. That's what's up. Okay, so let me just read Psalm 13. How long, O oh Lord? How long? How long, O oh Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider me and hear me, O oh Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes. Lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed against him. Let those who trouble me rejoice when I move. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I, Lord God, will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountiful with me. Okay. In Psalm 13, verse 1 through 6, God is a God of justice. So David, this is this is where they believe David. Because they don't say who. Oh, yeah, it does. It say David. Okay. David was singing out to God. And he was asking, how long will it take for him to receive his justice? For him to receive his vindication? Because he is just waiting on God and waiting. Kind of like a waiting season, right? So he's in this season of waiting and he's crying out to Father Abba, how long, oh Lord, how long? God wants us to know justice takes time. In the middle of your situation, the Lord God will help you find hope and trust in his unfailing love. My heart rejoices because of, of God's salvation. I wrote this and God was showing me what 
helped me out a lot during these seasons and it was the love I had for him like I love God so much that when I get angry my spirit steps out of me to calm me down I don't know if that makes sense but it's like my spirit pushes my flesh out of the way if that makes sense, right? And and it's, it's like, I just be like, I love God. Like, I love you so much. I can't even fathom hurting you like that because you are hurting God. When you are outside of his will and you're not loving people and you're not uh, being obedient, thank you, Holy Spirit, that breaks his heart. You hurting him. He's a God of love. He's not a gossiping God. He's not a God that lie on you. He's not a God that tell people to treat you badly. He's not a God that put that spirit in them for them to treat you like that. God is a God of love. Do you know what love is? I don't even have the definition of love here. <laughs> love is beautiful. Love is unexplainable. <laughs> you got to Google it if you want words. Love is an experience with God. Love is, thank you, Holy Spirit. Love is him creating you when he could have created somebody else. Like, love, guys, love. Why? Some of y'all feel like me. Like, why, Lord? <laughs> why me, right? Well, like, why did you choose me? Or, or why am I suffering for this long? How long? Why is it this long, Right? Or, why do you keep going? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Why do you keep going? It's the love that you have for the Lord God that helps you to keep trusting in Him, even through harsh reality and trying times and moments, even when you can't see what He's doing. So, that's called faith. When you can't see what God is doing and it's working out for you, He's doing it in the spiritual realm. And he's working it out for us. So we just got to trust in the salvation of the Lord. Trusting in the salvation of the Lord. What does that mean? That means you trust that Jesus went on a cross and took care of all of this for you. Trusting in God's salvation. Trusting in the move of God. Trusting in what he does in your life. Trusting that where he's telling you to be is where you're supposed to be. Trusting him is just doing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's following the voice of God. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. We're going to talk about hearing the voice of God. Um, it's going to be this is going to be a short video. Okay. In this Psalm 13, God was just distancing himself from David. So he had never got rid of him. David just couldn't feel his presence. And in one of my other videos, I said that sometimes God tests us, tests us, and sometimes we're doing so good on the test, it's no need for God to come and 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 show his presence like that, right? So we're so busy chasing a moment. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're so busy chasing a moment instead of just going with the flow and listening to God's voice and just knowing he's present. He's there. It says it in the Bible. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. As well as in another verse, it says, you are not alone. Father God is with you. So, God never forgot about David. God was just testing David. Tests and trials and tribulations bring promotions. It bring more responsibility from God. Okay? So, when you are passing those things, just know that's the reason why you have tests to go through those moments of not feeling God or to to go through other moments and other circumstances and situations. It is because God is just testing us. 
Okay? Sometimes you don't want to hear that. <laughs> Sometimes you just be like, Father, please. Very respectfully, of course. But you just, you don't want to hear it. You just, you got to be real. But it is what it is. God is just testing us. And you have to put your trust, your faith, and you have to believe in him. In Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spoke to them. All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. So you have to know who you are serving. You have to know that you we serve a victorious God. We serve an intentional God. Very, very intentional. And Jeremiah 45, verse 5 through 6. The Lord said, Behold, what I have built, I will break down. And what I have planted, I will pluck up. That is this whole land. And I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And do you seek great things for yourself? Do not seek them. For behold, I will bring adversity on all flesh, says the Lord. But I will give your life to you as a prize in all places, wherever you go. Do not seek them. The Lord God wants us to have the right mindset. Not obsessed or overly concerned about our own advancement and perceived success. It is not always about you. God says one day he will bring judgment on all flesh. Worldly power and popularity and prestige will be swept away. It will be no more. People are dying to be noticed. People are dying to be received. This is why God say, forget them folks. Forget people that think you're uniquely um, weird or different. You're supposed to be. Let me tell you something. I stuck out so much. And God finally revealed it to me. You know why you kept sticking out all these years? You getting these friends. They not lasting. Those friends not lasting. It's not supposed to be because you are a chosen one. So what God has for your life is going to be different than what he has for your friends and your family's life. Everyone is going to be affected by what God is doing in your life. But you are to be different. You are to be holy. You are to be sanctified. And you are not to care what other people think about you. Because you have to know God created you specifically for him. We are angels on assignment. Which means find out your purpose and get busy. Tomorrow not promised, guys. Tomorrow is not pro promised. Man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, he died at 57. God promises us 70 years. That lets you know that you can be taken at any time. At any time. God can do what he wants to do because this is his earth. <laughs> Say, I ain't got to give you no 70 years. You finna go right now because it's time for you to get promoted. And that's another thing. When you are a child of God, you're living in your will. You're living in your purpose. When you die, your death is not like a commoner's death. Death to us is a promotion. We are angel overseers in heaven. You have to know who you are. That means in heaven, you are watching over everybody by the throne of God. That means you are sitting by the... <laughs> You are sitting at God's right hand at the throne. That's a promotion, right? So tomorrow is is not promised, guys. Tomorrow is not promised. Remember that. So don't worry about who accepts you. Don't worry about who's not accepting you. God is just like, I love you. I'm here for you, right? So keep going for God. That's why I, that's why I said not too long ago, my love for God is my why. Because if you get any other reason, you might stop. Just but your love for God can never die out. Like that's passion, that's eager. Like you're going to always be hungry to satisfy God. So that needs to be your why every day. He does not want us to seek a name for ourselves. 
a place of importance and distinction among men without him. God does not want you doing anything and you didn't ask him to do it. You want to go spend money on this? You want to go get a job over here? You want to go move over here? You thinking about making the next move? Include God, guys. He does not want y'all getting no kind of glory and he's not getting no glory for heaven for it. That's how God works. If he's not getting the glory for it, he don't want you to have it. Because it didn't come from him. God wants the glory out of everything in your life. He does not want you to do anything by yourself and then say you did it that's why i don't work he wants the glory so don't seek a name for yourself of importance and don't don't try to be popular without god just don't try to be popular without god guys that's what i got don't don't be popular without god Invite I said, invite God, invite Jesus to help you because God is bringing judgment on all flesh. By you having this revelation, it should change your desire from wanting things like fame and popularity to focusing on dealing with eternity, life and death and the life after. God promised to always take care of us whenever, wherever we go. Yeah. But I will give your life to you as a prize in all places wherever you go. This is what he's saying in Jeremiah 45 verse 6 verse 5. Okay. In Jeremiah 45 verse 5 God promised to always take care of us Wherever we go That's why he said we're not alone He is with us Trust So basically guys I just did some definitions A little bit of some definitions And I'm going to close out Trust is putting confidence into something Or someone Confidence is having faith or belief that one will act right or proper or or in, in or in a effective way. An example is trusting a leader, trusting a boss, having confidence in um, this person you just chose to lead you, right? God wants this. God wants this kind of relationship with you and with him. Be obedient and listen to the voice of God. Prophet okay. Because the enemy is okay, I'm gonna say this. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the author of confusion. The enemy is the deceitful one, the devil, right? So soon as God releases a word, he's trying to steal it from you before you can let it sink in your spirit and you ride off and you take off with it, right? So what he does is God will give you something and you know it's from him. My sheep know my voice. Like, you know that's God, right? But then somebody else very trustworthy, an apostle maybe, a bishop or a pastor, they'll come say something very contradicting to what God just told you. So now you have to choose between you knowing this is the voice of God and you knowing this is a man or woman of God. Hello? God said follow his voice. Trust him. I got some instructions. All right, amen. I'll tell them. I got some instructions. I ain't gonna tell y'all the details, but I got in specific instructions from God to move forward and to do this. And I have other messages coming in that saying, you crazy. You better not do this. You better not do that. And I paused and I said, whoa, God, look at this. Is it this or is it that? And God said, follow my voice. He said, follow my voice. Because people will look at your situation and circumstance and they know you're not supposed to be treated a certain way. And so they'll be like, no, don't do this. Don't do that. But you'll be surprised. God is like, <laughs> and God is telling you, no, go do it. Hmm. Hallelujah. 
My ways are not your ways, God is saying right now. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Prophets can only see your heart's desires. So when you have people, um, I have a few helpers, but when you have helpers, when you have people that's there, they can't see what God has been, how he's been leading you. They only could see what's in your heart. And that's why God gives us a Bible verse. Keep a pure heart because your heart is on display. So people could just see <laughs> The gifted people that's, you know, whatever. I'm not getting into that. But some people, they can see what's in your heart, good or bad. That's my stomach. I got to go eat. So, when you get a word from a bishop, a prophet, an apostle, take it to God. Okay? Even in the middle of them speaking, say, Father, in this moment, I invite you into this word. I want to make sure you're speaking to me. I know this is your voice, but I want to make sure this is for me. Like, be confident and exact when you're praying to God. And be real. God don't want nobody that's um, always trying to have a perfect prayer and you're not being yourself. Like, he want the real you. Don't be cursing, being disrespectful and stuff, but he wants you, the real you. So, they only know your heart's desires. Take everything to the throne of God. Honestly, my testimony is getting ready to be so shocking. I'm just like holding breath. <laughs> it's not even funny. Listen to God's voice. Sometimes it is different from what other people tell you. More of the story. Listen to God's voice. And if you're not sure, it's just like class. It's just like when you're in school. You got to raise your hand and say, I don't understand. It's the same thing with God. I was taught this from a little kid. If you don't understand something, say something. Don't sit there and be quiet and just keep going through stuff. And you're not understanding. you having problems. You don't, you don't see how this is working. Tell the Lord. He's waiting on you. He know you don't know what's going on. He's God. He's the creator. He know what's going on. He's just waiting for you to come to him. Okay? All right. Pastor Alf Lukal was talking about being a disciple, being a follower. Here, we are followers of Jesus Christ. We pick up our cross and we go. This is what we do at Predestined, Predestined Kingdom Ministries. So, another thing that the Lord is placing on my heart right now to tell you guys, he, or he's showing me in the name of Jesus. Don't be so caught up on how much you're sinning or what you're doing. Like... I don't mean to not be mindful of the Holy Spirit. Remember, once you choose Jesus, once you choose to be saved, once you choose to believe and you know, you are in the presence of the living God 24-7. Whether you get chills or you don't get chills. Whether you believe it or you don't. I'm telling you from the throne of God, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't care if you arguing with somebody. I don't care if you're having an awesome day. You are in the presence of the living God 24-7. Okay? If you think like that, you, it's impossible for you to, to still live the same old life. It's so impossible. So, in order to be a disciple, thank you, Holy Spirit, you have to pick up your cross. And that's what I was saying. One of my issues was I'm always seeing how I'm sinning. I'm always seeing where the, where I'm going wrong instead of all instead of congratulating myself when I'm doing something right. And God is a God of love, so he's never there bashing you. You did this, you did that, you forgot to do this, you didn't do that. Well, I'm still mad at you because of this and this. That's not God, people. And when you meet people like that, you just just know the Lord, the living God is there and he got you. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. He says I can say it. There's an angel. <laughs> There's specific angels designed intentionally to be with you through every single thing that you go through. When one angel leave, another angel come in. Hell, Kuto, I got chills. <laughs> That's why you're never alone. And if the enemy could get you to believe you're not called by God, you're not a chosen one, you're you're not um doing this right, you're not doing that. If he could get so much negative stuff in your head, then comes the spirit of fear. Then comes the spirit of doubt. Then comes the, the spirit of neglecting yourself because now you think you're not doing something right. And now you're just bashing yourself and now you may want to give up and uh-uh. Don't believe none of that. Soon as you hear that kind of stuff, whether it be from within or somebody around you, block it out right away. No, I am who God says I am. No, I am going to get here because God spoke it over my life and it has to spring, spring forth by a universal law. <laughs> I'm serious. Like... You have to command and speak to your days, even in moments of fury and trialing and trials. Like, what you are the prophet of your life. I am the prophet of my life. You are the prophet of your life. So you speak. And when you're picking up your cross and carrying it, that's what I was trying to say. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't worry about, I didn't do this, now I got to repent again, and I didn't do this, and I got to... You repent, but he don't want you going back to the same stuff. He knows it's a process for you to get healed and delivered from whatever the situation may be. From, from that particular um, sin or will outside of God. So... I used to worry about smoking weed, and then the Lord was showing me, like, Kenithia... Everything happens because I allow it, okay? And I had to calm down because, like, it, it was bad. Like, I used to want to die. Like, it was bad. Going through this whole calling, like, I done got suicide prayed off of me so many times. It's not even funny. <laughs> as soon as somebody start praying, I know they're praying for my future. But I just be looking at them and I be like, the devil is a lie. I'm not leaving here till I get everything that God promised me. So what I'm trying to say is it can push you to that point. And you have to not allow it. Okay? You have to be strong. And a lot of times God push you through those situations because you're strong enough to go through it and not kill yourself. This is what he had to show me for my Per particular situation because God will harden the people's hearts around you like a Pharisee. Like you will wake up one day and life is just not good for you that day. Like this is happening, that is happening. But because God is here with us, he's providing revelation to us and he's telling us what he's doing ahead of time so when these things do happen it's not a shock it's not such a dramatic surprise to where we do want to go somewhere and die like this is why <laughs> he does have prophets and this is why i'm telling you guys make sure you are following the voice of god make sure you're testing the spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're testing the spirit behind the spirit that's speaking to you to see. Is that spirit of God? Is that of love? You know, that's what God wants from y'all. Well, from us. This video was for all of us. And that's my time. Shout out, family. I love you guys. <laughs> Pray for you, he says. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for every eye that got to watch, every ear that got to listen. Hallelujah. Take over, Holy Spirit. Ah, shamba, ba, 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 ba. Zondoro kutumara kata santa na kalita kararos. Sotos, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Kasaya kasete. Babete shete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Father, I pray for the anointing that breaks the yoke. I pray that it is activated. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh Father, that your Holy Spirit have its way through me. In Jesus' name. Every sickness, every infirmity in your family, whether it be a, a, a spiritual sickness, a natural sickness, I break the yoke of the enemy now in the name of Jesus. Every I pray for your mental, I pray for your psyche, your mind. I pray to, for it to be transformed, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, renewed in Christ like. In the name of Jesus, I pray God's Holy Spirit to flush out your soul. I pray God flushes out your flesh and anoints you and fills you with his Holy Spirit. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then again for the next week. I pray, oh God, that you break the spirit of depression over your people. This the oppressing hand of the enemy devil, your reign of terror is over. In the name of Jesus, oh Yahweh, I pray you consume a fire in heaven, oh God. Start a fire in heaven that consumes the wills, the, the evil plans, the assignments of the enemy. I pray, oh God, every attack, every accidental, every accidental assignment cast upon these lives by witches and wizards and demons and flying and creepy spirits, evil diabolical spirits. In the name of Jesus, I pray these assignments be dismantled now in the name of Jesus. By the power and the authority you have given me, oh God, I pray for a spirit of love, peace, joy, prosperity, and happiness. Everywhere in their lives, oh God. Yes, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for full restoration, full restoration in your family, full restoration in your life. Everything that the enemy stole from you. You take it back now in the name of Jesus while the Holy Spirit is flowing through this call. You take back everything that they in the name of Jesus, devil. You vomit it up in the name of Jesus. You vomit it up. We take it back. Everything that you have stolen from the children of God in Jesus' name. Financially, relationships, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone watching this call. I plead the blood of Jesus over your children, over your families. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Archangel Michael to come for divine protection, to come save you guys, him and his angels. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for having your way. My God, thank you, Jesus. I pray for Shalom to fall. Fall in your spirit. Fall in your mind. Hallelujah. Fall in your families. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I pray, oh God, every angel in the body of Jesus Christ, every angel for you, for you, Elohim, hallelujah, for you, oh God, that the devil decided to capture, to arrest. May they be free now in the name of Jesus. May they go fulfill their will, the will that you have given them, oh God, their assignments in Jesus' name, in the spiritual realm and here in the natural. Oh, Father, have your way. I give you glory, honor, and I praise you. I rejoice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Santa. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for your promotion. You waiting for a promotion. I pray you get this promotion in the name of Jesus. Every testimony, please send me testimonies in Jesus' name. <laughs> send the testimonies, y'all. Hallelujah. Santa. Oh, bo, 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 bo. This is this promotion is a big promotion for you. This is a very big promotion. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for having your way. Hallelujah. 
In Jesus' name, amen. God says, remember your why. He said, remember why you chose him. Remember why you followed him. Remember your why. Amen. Have a good day, family.